All right, so you guys already know what the variable is, but we'll put it up here. Design a variable, or define a variable. That quantifies the relative progression of a reaction. So why relative progression? Do we have a variable that we've talked about thus far that talks about how much a reaction has taken place? Squiggle. Squiggle. Yeah. Also called the extent of a reaction, right? So now we're going to change that up a little bit and we're going to talk about a relative progression of a reaction. So again, we can choose a species on which to base this conversion. Okay? So as a convenience for right now, I'm going to choose species A as the basis. So, I mean, think back. Fogler, we either had K or Ka, right? And you guys have dealt with reaction rate versus the rate of consumption or generation of an individual species. Well, similarly, we're going to have conversion and then the conversion based off of a single species. So whereas these, you'll find people mixing. When you're talking about conversion, you're almost always talking about the conversion based on a specific species. So you might say you reach 90% conversion of A. So you guys know exactly how much of A was converted. So we want to rearrange this sort of generic equation so that this stoichiometric efficient coefficient is everywhere else and not here. And then again, this simply the moles of A reacted or converted, whatever you want to call it, over the moles of A in the feed. So why do we do this in terms of x versus fa or number of moles of a or something like that? We already written down these design equations. Why do we want to rewrite them in terms of conversion? We can scale them easier. You can scale them easier, right? I mean, that's a good way to think about it because it's a relative change, right? So if I have something that's 90% conversion, then it doesn't matter what the flow in or out is, right? I know that it's based on the flows. Yeah. Does that apply to batch? Does this apply to batch? Yeah, so by feed, what do we mean? What's, what is that for a batch reactor? Sure. A lot of times you'll hear the word charge. You charge a reactor and then you let it go. That's, you're still doing it with a feed, but you're right, it's not a flowing feed, but it's still a feed. Another thing that's nice is I only need to solve, if I've got this system with A, B, C, D, right, and I use these, then I've got to worry about doing them, doing multiple material balances. Solving things in terms of X means that I only have to solve, uh, solve one material balance. And I do so in terms of x, and then I can easily convert from 90% conversion of one species to a different conversion of a different species. So if I have conversion here, is this per reactor or per reaction? 
reaction. It has to be tied to some overall reaction that I've written down, right? So if I have two overall reactions, I'm not talking about elementary reactions, don't let me confuse you. But you get two overall reactions like A goes to D versus A goes to U, desired versus undesired, each one of those is going to have some conversion, right? Those are not elementary steps of one overall reaction. Those are two different overall reactions. And that's where I have to define conversion based on an overall reaction. Okay, so we had our batch reactor. We have number of moles that we start with. <laughs> and then we have number of moles at some time later on. Right? If A is being consumed, then of course we know that the number of moles at a function of time is less than the initial number of moles that we started with. So now we just want to put that in terms of conversion, whereas before we just did it in terms of flow rate. So remember, moles of A reacted is equal to the moles of A fed or charged times times that conversion, right? And again, often you'll see that left off, but that's defined based on species A. It won't always be written there explicitly, but yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So what's on the left that we haven't written down, right? It's the moles of A reacted, which is not in A, right? That's the moles left. So it's Na minus NaO times minus 1. Everybody see that? So the amount left minus however much you started with, well, I guess it's easier to do it the other way. The amount you started with minus the amount left. So you can rearrange this and write that number of moles of A is equal to NaO times 1 minus the conversion. And of course, both Na and X depend on time for a batch reactor, right? So any questions? Yeah. Is that X in the bottom line for species? Again, it, is it species A? It, it is, but most of the time it's not going to be written So that is the design equation for a batch reactor. So it's kind of implied if you're saying 90% of A, you know, 90% conversion in A. But yeah, I mean, technically speaking, you can have two different conversions for two different reactions or reagents. Does that make sense to everybody? Why can I have two different conversions? Hmm. I mean, just as a quick example, if I have A and B, and I've got a flow rate in of 3 and 3, just we won't even mess with the units, and I'm coming out, and then I have A left, 1, B left, 2, because my reaction is A, 2A plus B goes to the problem, right? So obviously, you're going to have a different conversion of A versus conversion of B. Even though the stoichiometry, you know, you might think that the stoichiometry fixes it for you, but it doesn't. The swiggle, the swiggle would be the same. That's right. All right, so if we go back to some of the equation that we had up earlier for a batch reactor.
right? Remember this one? We just had it up. Now we also have that equation. So if we want to integrate to solve for a time, we integrate from zero conversion to some specified conversion, right? Which is again a function of time. And then what shows up inside here? And remember that the rate is a function of conversion and volume can also be a function of conversion. Right? If it's a batch reactor, that doesn't mean that it's constant volume. Most of the time it is, but it's not a given. And so you can rearrange this somewhat and make this a concentration term if what is true. How can I pull the volume out of this integral? Constant. Right. If you have constant volume, then I can pull this out and make this a concentration. This is still written in terms of conversion. So I can't pull out the rate, right? Unless I had a zero order reaction, in which case the rate would be constant. But otherwise I can't pull out the rate. The rate has to stay inside. So the other thing, though, is what if the volume is not constant? How do we handle that? Hmm? Yeah, if you have measured the if you have measured the change in volume with respect to time, then you could just plug it in. But what if you don't have that measurement? What do you think you normally would have? What, uh, with conversion? Yeah. yeah, that's kind of, that's what we're trying to get, right? So if I were doing this and the volume changed, I could probably pretty easily get the initial and final volume, right? That's usually what you use, and so you estimate that the volume out, or end, we'll say, is just equal to So I mean that's commonly done is you just assume that the volume change is linear. It's not, but it works out because again these volume terms don't usually the volume's not changing so much that it usually creates a big problem. Yeah. If it's gas, like a constant like a situation where we just assume like an ideal gas that number holds proportional to the volume? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's in here both. Yeah. For liquids, concentration is just concentration, right? For gases you normally treat it as an ideal system. And again, constant volume is way more common than the changing volume. Um, if you have that changing volume, though, this is what it ends up looking like. So again, yeah, if you have the volume change as a function of time, you can just plug it in and solve this side of the equation. But often you don't, so you just assume as an approximation that the volume change is linear with time. All right, so now let's look at flow systems. So again, we want to know the same thing. How much volume do we need to get a special, yeah? On the left side, uh, did you need to write that as like a scale equation or multiply it by some function? Here or here? The top one. There's no linear dependence. 
Yeah, this should be volume star. Yeah, sorry about that. We're good. So again, the goal is to determine a reactive volume to get some desired conversion. Right. So again, we, if we write out the same thing that we had before, which was moles of A reacted. Again, the right side of this equation is just FAO times X. Mole of A reacted for mole of A fed. It's the same thing that we wrote out before for the batch reactor. In the future. <laughs> oh yeah, we are short of life. Again, you've already written it in your note. It's mold of A reacted times mold of A fed. Um, and so you get FAOX, and then on the right side of that, again, you have oh, I did it again. Keep wanting to write that down. A minus L is how much reacted, right? Okay, so again, we can rearrange this. So we get the same equation that we had earlier. The only difference is now these aren't ends, right? We had ends earlier because we just had number of moles fed number of moles reacted. Now we've got flows. So that's the only difference between this one and what we had for the uh, batch reactor. So again, we had this up earlier. This is where you'll actually use it. You can write that in terms of volumetric flow rate, and now in terms of instead of S, you can write it in terms of concentration. Why do we want to keep putting things in terms of concentration? That's what you're doing the change in perspective. Hmm? That's what you're doing the change in perspective. That's what the rate is written in, right? Rates are written in terms of concentration. So you guys always need to know how to go from the flows in and out to concentrations, because that's how you solve the rate equation. And then, yeah, for for liquids, concentrations are given, right? But for gases, <clears throat> concentration is equal to the molar fraction times the total concentration, and then the total concentration of a gas for an ideal gas is the pressure divided by R T. Right, that is PV equals NRT, so N over V equal to P over RT. So for gases, if I give you a pressure, no freaking out, right? Assume that's an ideal gas, and just solve the ideal gas equation, and you'll get a concentration. Is that clear?